Resin 3D printers are universally loved by model makers and tabletop gamers alike. But are they any good for functional engineered parts for someone like me? Let's find out with Elegoo's brand new Mars 5 Ultra. So Elegoo has for some reason decided to entrust me with reviewing their brand new, as yet unreleased 3D printer. Uh, it will be released by the time you guys see this video, but as of right now, this printer hasn't even been unveiled to the wider world, so that's quite exciting. Now, as well as being a brand new, as yet unknown printer, this type of printing is absolutely unknown to me as well. Whilst I'm pretty familiar with printing with this stuff, which is filament, this guy is going to be printing using this stuff, which as you can hear, is a liquid. So yeah, this is a resin 3D printer, something I've never dabbled with before, um, something I'm quite excited to get into and learn all about. But yeah, so I do have to say, if you're looking for a video with an expert who's going to talk you through on how exactly you should use a resin 3D printer, this is probably not the one. Anyway, with all that said, I think we should probably get it out of the box. So let's get into this thing here. Got a little power cord, which I'm guaranteeing is going to be a European or French plug. We use British plugs here. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to uh, find, a, find a power lead or wedge this in somewhere. So next we've got the actual machine itself, which is actually a lot heftier than I thought it was gonna be. But yeah, it's actually got a pretty uh, hefty weight to it, surprisingly so. So this is our removable top cover by Lix Fit. And plenty of foam and stuff inside. So we've got a little tool kit there straight away, that's pretty cool. So this looks like our build plate with a very cool looking etched surface on there, I think that is. Really nicely packed so far, I have to say there's pretty much no chance that this would have gotten damaged. So here's the base of the machine. I have to say, first impressions, this thing feels really, really well made. It feels like almost like professional grade. This is all metal at the bottom here and it's got a really nice reassuring weight to it. So let's get the, uh, the cover uncovered. So here's our cover. Pop it on just so you guys can have a look at the finished product. So this little beauty is the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra, which is the latest in Elegoo's line of small sized but higher functioning uh, resin 3D printers. And as I said before, I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to resin 3D printing. But my first impressions of this little machine are that it's very, very high quality and very nicely made from what I can see so far. Obviously, I've got to try printing with it first yet and see how I like it after that, but first impressions, yeah, really, really nice. So I'm pretty excited to do my first test print in this thing, so I'm gonna have a look at the manual. So the first few pages are kind of the normal thing you'd expect. It's kind of giving you a packing list and an identification of what all the bits are on the printer. But the actual instructions on starting your first test print are actually surprisingly simple. There's only a couple of pages here. In fact, there's only one page dedicated to the first test print of the printer. So that's quite, that's quite interesting. There's not much setup, it would seem. So after inserting the build platform into the connecting block, press down the handle to secure the build platform to the connecting block. The build plate is capable of self-leveling and is ready to use right out of the box. And that locks it down in place. Well, that's pretty simple. This is all kind of die cast aluminium by the feel of it. It feels really kind of solid and very, very nicely made so far. So once that's done, literally the first step is then to start adding resin immediately to the tank, which is kind of scary. And immediately I can see back there a linear rail along with this lead screw here, so that's always a good sign. If you see linear rails on an FDM printer, you know it's a fairly serious bit of kit. So, yeah, I mean, this feels, it's all very, very stiff and sturdy, so. So then there's nothing mentioned in the manual about this, but there seems to be some kind of a protective film on the LCD screen under here. So I'm gonna take this tray out, or the uh, resin tank, I think they call it, which again, it actually is really, really nice. This is again a nice aluminium uh, weighty piece of equipment. Of again, really, really nicely made. I was kind of expecting this to be a lot more plasticky than it is so far, and this is, yeah. We have got a sticker here that says, Pe please peel this off before printing, so I will do that. And then we can see our LCD down here at the bottom, which is what's gonna be curing that resin layer by layer as we print. DC power jack plugged in here. Okay, and the machine is firing up straight away. So I say, device self-test, release film usage count zero, status of LCD screen. So it's doing some kind of a mechanical self-test procedure while it looks at this, that's interesting. Pretty 
printing test and slicing software. So it looks like they put the slicing software on the USB stick as well. So we're going to come out of here first though, because we've got to do one more important thing. We just put some resin in this thing. So this is the part in the video where we actually have to put on our PPE. So Elegoo have provided some of these rather horrible little gloves, as well as a couple of these face masks, which uh, remind me a little bit too much of a little event that happened a few years ago. Now, the reason for all this safety is that this stuff, the resin, is actually pretty nasty stuff. You don't really want to get this on your skin, you don't want to breathe it in, and you certainly don't want to drink it. Now, I'm really not sure what a paper mask is going to do against the kind of fumes that this, this stuff is going to let off. In my video, it's probably not going to do very much at all, but I am going to wear it. And I've actually ordered a proper respirator type mask, uh, which has the big filters on the side, which will be a lot better at filtering out the VOCs and whatever else is going to come off this stuff. So basically, I've not used this stuff before, but I've read and watched enough videos to know that this is some pretty nasty stuff and we need to be careful with it and treat it with respect. So yeah, here we go. Okay, now we're ready to 3D print. Okay, so let's crack this stuff open. It'll be interesting to see how strong this actually smells. It's a very serious bottle though. Oh, that's got a bit of a pong to it. But right, I think first thing I've, first I've forgotten to do is give it a good shake because this stuff probably settles. Okay, yeah, we'll give it a good shake. Okay, let's go for the pour. So it says, so there is one line in the manual that says you've got to do at least a third of a tank, but obviously don't go over the max. So we're going to go for about half a tank on our first print and just see how we get on. Oh, this is exciting. So next step, we're going to pop this anti-UV cover on top. And we're going to head in, start a test print. You can probably just about see this, but it's slowly lowering the bill plate down into the goo. So it seems to be auto leveling now. Oh, it's just completed it already. That didn't take very long. And now we've just got a little progress bar at the bottom there and it seems to be starting its print. So I guess we'll come back in a couple of hours and see what we get. Very exciting. Just notice we get a really cool glow from the grills here once the uh, UV light is turned on. I'm guessing there you go, it's just an indicator to show it's working. Pretty cool. So while the Mars 5 Ultra is merrily printing away there, you can hear it doing layers. There's one. There's another. It's quite quick actually. So I think that Elegoo must have thought that I was already an experienced resin 3D printer operator because they didn't send me a curing machine, which is what this is. So after this guy arrived and didn't have a curing station with it, I had to go on Amazon and order this with my own money, which I don't mind because it means I can show you guys the full experience. Basically, when you print a model using a resin printer, you need to cure it after it's been printed. So that's what this guy's for. It's a UV light, basically, inside a UV proof box um, with a little turntable in the bottom. And that's basically the way that you cure your models to make sure that the resin is fully hardened. And it looks like an even dinkier little machine. How cute is that? Got a nice Tupperware box in here, which is gonna be our wash station, I'm pretty sure. Wow. Again, I have to say, for the money, this feels really, really nicely made. It's all uh, nice anodized aluminium all around. I think this is steel plates on the side. Simple little touch buttons on the front. But yeah, this is about £80 on Amazon at the time, and I think they're doing pretty well to make something like this for that kind of money. But yeah, that's basically it. A little... Elegu Mercury Plus 2. Very snazzy. So after struggling initially to remove the test print from the build plate using the included scraper, a quick Google search revealed that hot water poured over the build surface was recommended to release the part. And sure enough, it worked perfectly. And there we go. There's our first little resin print off the Mars 5 Ultra. Pretty chuffed with that. That was a pretty painless experience to get that off the machine. I literally plugged it in, poured some resin in, uh, attached the build plate, and it leveled itself off and did 
all the work for me. So yeah, that's pretty impressive, to be honest. This is obviously not cured yet, and I've just given it a quick spray with some IPA, isopropyl alcohol, to get the worst of the uh, uncured resin off. I just need to let it dry for a bit now, and then I can pop it in the Mercury Plus and get it cured up. Now I've bought and tested enough 3D printers to know that test prints are often sliced and set up specifically to show off the best features of the printer and none of its shortcomings. And sure enough, this one shows off lots of cool detail, smooth surfaces and sharp edges that just wouldn't be possible on any of my FDM printers. So the real stress test of how forgiving and well-designed a printer is begins when a new, unskilled user like me starts throwing every STL file they can find at it. So that's what I did. I downloaded a massive range of miniature models and started printing, and printing, and printing some more. And to be completely honest with you, the Mars 5 Ultra absolutely bossed it. Despite my limited knowledge that I managed to glean off a 10 minute YouTube video, I was able to slice and print a veritable army of miniatures and models without a single failure. As a long-term FDM user, the level of detail and sheer beauty of these prints has absolutely blown me away. And this is without any optimization of the print settings whatsoever. Print exposure, layer height and everything else are still at their default settings, which shows you there are still probably more gains to be had from fine-tuning the setup. Now I think most people with any imagination or interest in fantasy settings will agree that these minis are pretty awesome. However, this is primarily an automotive YouTube channel. So I wanted to see if resin printing has any place at all in the world of cars and car parts. The first challenge in that regard is that this printer has a positively tiny build volume compared with even the smallest of FDM printers. With a build width of only 78mm, you're going to be severely limited on the size of the part that you can print on the Mars Ultra 5. As a little comparison, this is the same two parts on the bed of my FL Sun V400 Delta and again here on my Kitty X Plus 3's bed, both of which are FDM type printers. While resin printers tend to be smaller than their FDM counterparts, there are definitely bigger options out there, with Elegoo themselves offering the Saturn and the Jupiter range of printers above the Mars. However, I still wanted to try a functional 3D print on the Mars 5 Ultra here to see if it has any utility at all in a car enthusiast's toolkit. So I found a couple of bits designed for the Land Rover Discovery 2 by user Heiter on printables.com and set the Mars to work. At the same time, I sliced the same files and sent them over to my FL Sun V400 so we could get a direct comparison between the resin and FDM prints. And here's the result. Both sets of parts are dimensionally very accurate, coming within a few tenths of a millimetre of the original design. However, what's immediately obvious is that the resin prints have a far superior finish and overall look to them. The FDM prints, whilst fairly good, are immediately recognisable as a 3D printed part. With the resin prints though, it would be nigh on impossible to distinguish them from say an injection moulded part, especially once they've had a coat of paint. The Discovery 2 horn button is particularly impressive in resin. It looks like a carbon copy of the Land Rover part. The FDM one though is a lot rougher with the layer lines clearly visible. This would need a good bit of post-processing to look anywhere near as good as the resin one does. What's even more impressive to me is that the print times were pretty much identical between these two printers, despite the resin printer producing four times the layers and therefore four times the detail. And make no mistake, the V400 is no slouch when it comes to FDM printing. It's over eight times faster than your typical Ender 3 type bed slinger. But the fact that it has to produce both parts at once and each layer takes longer the more parts that you put on the bed slowed it down. The smart features which some experienced resin printers, sorry, printerists, may deem unnecessary have made my first couple of weeks in resin printing much easier and more enjoyable. Unlike my first foray into FDM printing where I spent 90% of the time tinkering with the machine and 10% of the time hoping my prints would work, this has been an absolute breeze. We're already nearly through our first kilogram of resin and we're looking forward to trying out new materials. 
I say we because my girlfriend has taken a surprising interest in this machine and the more aesthetic resin prints, which she just doesn't have for our FDM printers. So overall, as a beginner resin printerist, I can thoroughly recommend this printer. My only suggestion would be that you consider the Saturn IV, also from Elegoo, if you want to print anything of size. However, the small footprint of the Mars 5 Ultra may make it desirable if you're limited on workshop counter space. And anyway, it's plenty big enough to pump out those miniature models. Now remembering the main topic of this channel, as a car enthusiast or a tinkerer, your first printer should probably still be a modern, up-to-date FDM printer. The variety of engineering materials and suitability of FDM to purely functional parts can't be argued with. However, for someone like me who's already hard into their FDM stuff, I think a relatively low cost resin printer like this one offers enough potential uses to be worth the cost and effort.